Welcome back to The Middle Ground. I'm your host, Key, and we're reporting live from the Honey Queen Juice Bar. So recently there's been a discussion of FBA and non-FBA. Many of you may or may not be familiar with the terms. It is something that Tariq Nasheed popularized. And what is FBA? FBA is basically a foundation of black American. It's an African American that was basically born here. So a first generation African American. Obviously we know that we're all from Africa, right? Um, however, due to the transatlantic slave trade, there has been a very drastic separation um, between African Americans here and those on the continent. And we've noticed that that drastic separation has created a lot of conflict and turmoil. And the understanding is that we're all black, we're all African, we should get along, it should make sense. But unfortunately, due to colonization, due to white supremacy, due to outside forces, it has really severed the relationship between Africans and African Americans. So I'm gonna talk to you guys. How do you guys feel or what has been your experiences? And not just Africans, it can be, you know, um, black people from the Congo, excuse not from the Congo, that's Africa. Black people from the UK, black people from the Caribbean, um, black people from Asia. Black people are everywhere as a result of this, you know, the transatlantic slave trade. We're all across the globe. So what has been your experience dealing with foreigners? Has it been different? Uh, is their mentality different? What would you say? Hmm. Um, I would say I mean, I would say um, some of the friends that I had like in college were um, their parents were from different countries and things like that. And I would always just get inspired by their drive to like, and this is not everybody, so this is definitely a generalization, but um, generally I was inspired by like their drive to like, really do well and really because they're like yo my parents literally had to go through all this stuff to like get here so i really want to make sure i'm you know doing my best with the resources that i have so i was inspired by that but then at the same time i encountered like um people that were from you know on the continent and they would be like yeah like african americans don't have necessarily the best reputation you know we like and it's like okay so they're being kind of socialized to think that you know, black Americans are thugs and criminals too. Just like you know what I mean. So, and that's again a generalization. But um, so I've had I've had both experiences. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Well, I remember when I was on Clubhouse back when I used to be on Clubhouse. Uh, I had a homegirl who had uh, was part of this one group. You know, it was like the African Center group. You know, had Nigerians in there and all that stuff. And uh, you know. I was I was seeing a disclaimer on there. They talked about the word Akata, you know, mm. that that uh, that term that used to basically uh, which, how would you say disparage uh, disparage yeah so it's like disparage. an N word yeah disparage uh, Black Americans. I've never heard of that. Yeah, Akata. so they were saying no, don't use the word Akata, blah blah blah. Now now listening to this clubhouse and being involved in it, it was this one person that was saying. Oh well, African Americans are racist towards Africans and this and that. You know, we're just you know saying ridiculous. Yeah, this stuff I couldn't believe. You know what I'm saying? Talking about like oh, African booty scratch. Use that term, right. African booty scratches. You know, which is like low kid shit. You right. know, what I'm saying? Right. I mean, I've you know, never heard that since. I right, like we up, grown right. ass people. And on top of that, you know, white people they disparage them more than. Black people, because right. we always was the ones Very to want to link with other Africans Very. from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. You know, we always, you know, started that uh, the uh, the uh, what you call the pro-black stuff that Absolutely. actually expanded across the whole world. Because mm -hmm. if you look at like Marcus Garvey, you know, he Absolutely. couldn't make it happen in Jamaica. He couldn't make that red, black, and green happen in Jamaica. Right. He had to come here. Yeah, he had to go to a foreign land. And that, and that, honestly, so that brings it to me, I guess. Um, when it comes to black foreigners and when it comes to my experience, it has been overwhelmingly uh, negative. When dealing with um, Africans, a lot of times they interact with African Americans, at least in my experience, like foreigners, like 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 a Mexican would or like a an Italian would or European. Or, like it's 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 not like you're my brother, your family. Uh, we come from the same place. It's not. It's just like well, no. Uh, you get yours and I'm gonna get mine. It's a very hands-off type of relationship. And the reason why that is shocking, because out here, at least me growing up, we were always taught to 
unify, like he said, yeah. with Africa, mm -hmm. to lean, like if you meet an African, be pleasant, be polite, um, because these are brothers, th these are people from the continent, so we should always be trying to go out of our way to form this relationship. However, in my experience, um, even when like, some went, and not even in my personal experience, like some some other friends have said that back in college, even when dating African men, like they look at African American women um, as sex, sexual conquest the same way like if you were dating like somebody who wasn't black like it's 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 this separation of culture it's a separation of identity some people have even said that they they present themselves or position themselves to be like they're better are they look down on african americans are they look down on people from america because they feel like you know we've been here for this whatever amount of time and have not made that many advancements but the unfortunate part is that like she said they're being misinformed they're not being socialized because they're not aware of the racism that we face mm -hmm. um, they don't seem to be aware of the history of our like african-american history don't seem to understand like the civil rights and all the movements that have taken place on this on this continent because if they um, excuse me in america because if they did they would never disparage black people black people have dealt with consistent hurdles challenges and we've stayed right here on this country and fought whereas like lc said these foreigners you didn't you didn't you obviously didn't stay where you, you where you from because you came here mm -hmm. and what Tariq is saying and these people who's talking about fba is that there is a pride that comes from being african-american because this is our country we, anybody who knows it knows that we built this country and we have not left this country like we're here since we've been kidnapped from wherever various countries across africa 500 400 years ago we nobody has left i mean unless you moved out of the country most people have stayed here and they built generationals here whereas all these other people who are coming from their country senegal ghana nigeria whatever you're coming here for the opportunities that african americans built here so there should be a level of respect there should be a level of unification there should be a level of humility but i think the rift comes when they come here and they take on an era of superiority they take on an era of disrespect they almost become like white supremacists are like foreigners and it's like well you're supposed to be our brothers because we're all supposed to be from africa whether it be 400 years ago or whether you just came over here in a few years and we hear that they are being socialized like she said to think of us to see the worst parts about our culture the hip-hop the futures the baby mamas the baby daddies so to their to their defense we will say that their socialization makes them or taints their uh, interaction with us. But I feel like they should be intelligent and smart enough to see that we have a common enemy by way of what's been going on around us. We have the same oppressor and that should basically push us together because we can basically very well say and look down on Africa and say, well, how is it that you guys have been over in Africa and you and you guys have not been up, built up Africa either okay. and you guys had to come to America. We haven't had to leave nowhere. Right. Well, okay, so I feel like on this, I just now heard this term FBA. Mm -hmm. Foundational Black American. It's, it's it's a new term. But um, you know we come up with new terms every day. Okay. But um, and it's basically just basically just signifying that you were born right here. here That's born. it. Okay. Yeah. But I just feel like I I kind of get why. Um, how you were saying that if you date a man that's um a non FBA or whatever, and they treat you like, like like they're white. Like whatever. they're white. So they probably to them they probably are. Okay, I think that's what it is. They do. To them, so like they an exotic black. Right. Uh that's her. So like anyways, I feel like um because racism is global. You know what I'm saying? So um they they probably look at things just like white people or people outside of the country. Do. They know probably they do. And and it's that's that. what that's what FBA is talking so that's what you're talking about? That's what FBA is saying. And FBA is saying, no, that's what FBA, they're saying basically that these people, they're, the reason why there is such a rift is because they don't see us the way we see them. They also have a different relationship with whiteness than we do. That's great. Our relationship with whiteness is that we know who this devil is because we've been dealing with it hell and on since we were kidnapped from our con from the continent. Right. So we know who this devil is. Whereas there seems to be some type of confusion, which is ironic because Africa is currently being colonized. So, I mean, what the hell? But there's, there seems to be some type of co confusion to where they feel like the white person is more of the ally as opposed to the African-American. That's crazy. Is but there, and I also, think too, oh, I'm sorry. I think too, um, an, just another layer to it is that maybe, like, as you were saying, our identity here, like, we do kind of see each other, oh, we're kind of all one big family, but we're all different, like, ethnicity wise. Like, there's some people Jamaican, there's some people that are, you know, there's different, but maybe, um, on the continent, maybe their identity is more based in, like, 
their uh, nationality. Like, oh, I'm from Ghana. Oh, yeah. I'm from maybe. I'm like, so I'm just maybe. saying, yeah. I'm in tri tribal too, yeah. you know? So maybe like they're, the way that they relate to people isn't this one big like family. Like maybe like because that's a completely different worldview too. Because mm -hmm. even though, yeah, they were colonized and things of that nature, like certain countries, um, maybe the majority of, of the people grew up in, in small, like, you know, different places where it was mostly just black people. So they don't even really have like and again generalization but having the interactions with white people to even experience racism like a lot of people are like I never even experienced racism like it's like coming from Africa like oh I, that just wasn't a thing you know? solutions I guess I'll start off the solutions is that um there definitely needs to be more conversations like this and actually I would like to have a part two and have some foreign black people uh, present because like I said I've dated Haitian men I've dated African men, I've dated uh, men from the UK, and the mentality is pretty much the same. And it's unfortunate that I understand the socialization and, and white supremacy and colonizing is global, but I feel like the love for blackness should it should just be there it should just be like if you see another black person you should just be like yo like when i travel i look for black people because i'm like yo yeah. something go down i need to know where my folks where at. my sister's at you know what i mean so I'm, I'm you know what i mean and i feel like when they come over here it's like no they want to be the they want to be the other they what they want to be the one black person to see of whiteness and it's like well that's just not really how it is for us you know what i mean so that's just how i would say what do you guys say some solutions are for y'all as far as black foreigners <laughs> or how we can improve our relationships between us and black foreigners just agree uh, okay, so I think one thing we can do is stop believing the lies about, like, um, what we think about uh, black foreigner. Like, get to know people personally. Because, like, before I had a lot of friends who, like, were um, African or whatever in high school. But before that, I didn't really have, like, um, a lot, of, like, I had basically foundational black American friends, like, mm -hmm. oh, my friends born here. Mm -hmm. All they family members from here, mm -hmm. okay? But when I got in high school, and I feel like it's a lot of areas where, you know, like, different foreigner, foreign black Americans are scattered. Mm -hmm. So, like, in Carson, there's a lot of, there's, like, a predominantly African mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. So, I, when I went to school, and I saw how some of them interacted with each other, with each other. but not, not us. us. I was like, wait, they their own people. I thought we was chilling. I'm like, well, I thought we all black. But we don't have the same experiences, so we need to stop believing the lies about what they say about. But I feel like if we start there, that even though our experiences are the same, what unites us is our blood. Right. And that's why when Marcus Garvey talk about with the RBG, the first R is the red, that stands for the blood. Basically what he said is that it don't matter if you from Africa, the UK, the, uh, the Caribbean, we're all black. And we right. all have the same African blood. That's how we're supposed to be, but that is not the interaction. That's not the understanding. Like I get the most, I get the most kickback from people who are supposed to be unifying. You know what I mean? And that's that's a problem. But but go ahead. Sorry. I don't want to unify with anybody who don't want to be unified. <laughs> I agree. I don't think that we should be going out of our way or overextending ourselves to build a bridge because we've always been here and I think that African Americans on our side we've always looked to Africa as our home and we've always cherished and exalted Africa this is the motherland whereas they look down on it's like oh that's just America or them it's just you know that's just baby mama baby daddy yeah. you know oh that's all they do you know and it's just like when you talk to them ask them what their understanding of us is it's not educated that's their stereotypes and we gotta think about the like the pro-black movement in hip-hop that occurred in the late 80s early 90s that actually pushed like africa and uphold upheld africa yeah. to, as the motherland true as a as a uh, put place. africa on the map yeah exactly you that's know what i mean true. black true. americans you know from a black uh we've always tried to connect black, with africa yeah africa bombada the whole, like you said, the whole uh, EPMD, A Tribe Called Quest, mm -hmm. all these artists mm -hmm. were geared towards reconnecting yeah, with Africa. Tons. Native uh, times, exactly. Yeah. That was a good one, I like that one. Okay, we can wrap it.